the most important 10 years in all of African-American literature is 1965 to 1976. To try to, to honor or, or examine the power of the movement, what it achieved, and not at the same time not to try to smooth out the contradictions any more than you would want to study modernism. That's when he takes that raw material that we think of as the basis of history and gave it back to us as lived experience. You can't fully appreciate it just by reading the score, you've got to hear it. In this way, Baraka has created a piece in the form of Hughes' experimental jazz poem, Ask Your Mama, 12 Moods for Jazz. Dimensions of endangerment for human beings that have to do both with nature and our own propensity for violence. Fame don't hurt nobody getting blistered with spotlight. That's my mask, not my face getting blistered with spotlight. That's my mask, not my face making folk double take what they see. I'm the straight man making folk double take what they see. I'm the straight man struggling not to fade away. That's the role that I play. Crooning my cool songs paint my stripes. They claim nobody gone corrupt with comedy. That's the ticket I sell. Tickled with slapstick blackness. I'll color each white face tickled with slapstick blackness. I'll color each white face red with laughter when I crack my eyes. That's how I do it. Um, writing criticism, writing reviews, I mean poetry is kind of a, it's a do-it-yourself field. <laughs> um, so you're, you're going to see all of these people showing up in different places and I really appreciate it. Okay, but what happens is you have Thelonious Monk and a few other figures like Monk. And Monk technically, meaning like if you make these little diagrams, Monk fits. Uh, Monk fits as, as a bebop. He's supposed to be a bebop figure. But he is so individual and so incredible as a musician that Baraka starts studying him and Monk becomes that essential figure for, for Baraka. And Monk becomes this figure, very important figure. These aren't correspondences which are easily mapped. They're not correspondences, I don't think, in the end, which are mappable at all. There's no, I don't think, there's any kind of social, demographic, statistical, uh, sociological regression that could be performed to map. There must be other pleasures involved in such choices at Jackson than merely dominance and capitulation. Indeed, one could be tempted to see Jackson as seeking a poet that's unfettered by the question of race politics, returning to that dubious ideal that mastery transcends race. But also because I'd like to um, argue that kind of this poem is not necessarily a poem that is trying to serve as a particular intertext um, with um, Afro-American fragment per se, but it is trying to deal with the fragmentation of diaspora and what that means in terms of gender and the politics of poetics. And it's an incredibly sensory poem in some of those multiple senses of diaspora that we talked about. And it also